In this video, I risk my life in the heat of furnaces, pouring molten metal from crucibles into molds to create epic artwork. All right, admittedly, risk my life might have been in a, I might be over dramatized, but I have always wanted to smelt and we are starting with tin. Let's just say this might be the gateway video, starting with something more approachable so we can work our way up to something a little more dangerous. Why am I, I'm always just going towards dangerous things like, Wee! oh, how did you get there? I think that transition worked really well. Speaking of what worked really well, the launch of our Kickstarter. Oh my God, we got funded in the first hour and a half, which is insanely cool. Let me just say thank you to everyone who backed us early. For those of you who don't know, I have designed the ultimate creative focused bags. Now we're just starting to announce some exciting stretch goals. There is so much cool stuff happening. And of course, encourage you to go check out that Kickstarter. Links in the description. It's only running for a couple of weeks and you'll never be able to get them again if you don't go over to the Kickstarter a page and pledge today. And we're gonna get started by leaping into the metal, starting off with a brave tin soldier. I mean, after all, what's more appropriate to make out of tin? And even more perfect, I will be the brave tin soldier. This is a 3D scan of my face that I actually did at PAX last year. A local company called Last Hold Games took my face scan, put it in a warrior's bust, and now I have this really cool little statue, which I could mini paint, or I could create a silicon mold of and turn myself into a tin soldier. You can pour molten tin in silicon without ruining the silicon mold, but I believe it's the one of the only main molten metals that you can do that with. Because as soon as you go to aluminium or anything else, it gets hot enough that that won't work, which means moving on to things like sand. Silicon is one of those things I'm familiar enough with that I can confidently make some molds and give it a go with tin today. And we also just happen to have an assortment of random silicon molds that we can pour tin into to see what ends up cool. We're actually smelting for the first time. I have a crucible that can melt not only tin, but higher temperature metals. We also have pure tin ingots. But we're also going to start with our dabble with this. This is a graphite mold that came with the crucible, which is perfect. So we can pour into there and create a little bar of tin. How cute is that? The trick apparently is to drop it in very gently. I do have this quartz stick, which will not melt in the crucible. No melting. Let's just keep waiting, shall we? How long does tin take to melt in a crucible? A few minutes to an hour. That's our range, so. You wanna grab lunch? This will handle gold or silver or, you know, steel, but you don't wanna pour hot molten metal into a cold graphite mold, so we're gonna heat it up a little bit. All right, we ready for our first pour? Let's mix it up. Oh, that's much more molten. Our first smelting. I mean, it's been a, a little bit. Is that gonna come out? Look at that, a little warm. That's cool. And that happened quick too. All right, let the dabble continue. Then we got a few random shapes. These silicon casts are from the jet engine of a Stormbird from Warhammer 40K. This is a custom purity seal, unicorn biscuit molds, and some feathers. All right, we have remelted. Whoa. <laughs> a flaming skull. That's cool. I reckon we go for a unicorn and then our jet engine. Let's start with the feather. You could obviously cut off the edges or whatever, but it's caught some detail. Okay, let's see if we have a unicorn. We have a very lumpy, undetailed unicorn. Let's see what our jet engines look like. Oh, that's cool, man. <laughs> see, when it works, it works. And we have a ploopy square. You ready? Oh, it's a, uh... oh no, it's still melted. What have I done? All right, we've had some success with our double, but it is time to dive. Next up, I'm gonna be using the first mold that I made. I have no way to tell what direction my statue is, so we're gonna be trying to perform some delicate surgery. Mm. 
This bust has a lot of detail in it and it remains to be seen if the tin not only will fill in that detail, but will flow evenly into all the areas it needs to. Let's see if this looks cool. We've got our silicon mold in our little tray here. All right, we're gonna put the camera down over there. My theory is if Tom gives it a little wiggle, but as I pour it, hopefully it'll sort of work the bubbles out as we pour. All right, mm -hmm. aggressive uh, jiggle. That's it, stop. Bit more, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Woo! Now it's time to see how it turned out. <gasps> That's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, it's not smooth looking. You can't see much of the detail of the face. I'm missing an ear. It looks like an ancient relic of a soldier from long ago. Wow, that turned out really good, I hope, tomorrow when I'm going to be doing all the casting. I was, this video is going to be one of those jumping through time ones. But I'm spending today sculpting and silicon mold making. And the first thing I'm going to sculpt, of course, is the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. For those of you who are most of the people watching this, The Wizard of Oz was a movie about 40 years ago. <laughs> All right, we have a Tin Man Popsicle. I've cut off the bottom and uh, stuck this on there so that basically I can suspend him in my mold. Ooh, that's a lot of wasted silicon. Let's cut it shorter. Oh, oh, uh oh, ah. Uh. And now I need some tape. <laughs> All right, that's uh, slightly height adjusted. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be pretty good. Might uh, pre-prime it, getting getting those areas a bit filled first. I don't know if this is gonna work. This is the only shot I got. You ready? I don't know if there's enough in there. Every little bit I can. I have no idea if what I did will prevent any bubbles. With a little bit of pressure. There you go. Let me just pop that in the fridge and bring it out tomorrow for a tasty treat. Let's reveal. It's time to see if our Tin Man Popsicle is tantalizing or terrible. I seem to have lucked into perfectly cutting along where the handle of the tin hut is. So that's kind of a very happy accident. Oh. Oh. Look, we can decide what detail we just get rid of. And I could literally shave this collar area. I've totally cut it off. Uh, cool. Gonna be touch and go as to whether we get anything out of this after we pour it. But I do have an inverse mold of a Tin Man head. Look at him smile. We're good to go. Okay. Okay, that's going in the face of our Tin Man. Okay. I think that's it. I think we're good. Woohoo! Oh, that's heavy. All right. Oh, it's still warm through the silicon. I'm gonna put my gloves back on. Ooh! <laughs> come on, come on. Oh my God. It actually broke the silicon mold. It still captured the detail. All I needed was one good cast after all. This turned out perfect. I am so happy with this. It actually caught all the detail it needed to catch and it's a solid tin man.
This video is brought to you by the Carryall Studio and the Carryall Studio Lite, the bags I've developed for you. Both are available individually or together or in a packed bundle with $100 worth of amazing art supplies over on Kickstarter now. You won't want to miss out because we're not going to be selling them again, but they are crafted to be the ultimate creator bags. So much so that they actually come with marker holders for both bags. Carry everything you want your way. Like this, briefcase style, with backpack straps or with a shoulder strap in a messenger carry mode. I've worked on these bags for over a year and with such attention to detail because I am really picky. So I know you're gonna love them. Perfect for carrying everything at conventions or to uni or work and of course, for traveling, because I have done a lot of traveling in my days and I know a lot of those pain points. This will fit under an economy seat in front of you, even though it fits a lot. The packed bundle will include a signed print by me as an extra thank you, and of course, will include all of the stretch goals. So that is the tier packed with the most value. But regardless of what you back, you're gonna get something amazing quality, lovingly crafted by me for creators like you. Check it out with the link in the description and pledge today while you can. Otherwise, that is it for the promo. Let's jump back in to the video. Let's start a new journey, this time in a tranquil boat. Jump on board because we are gonna sculpt some tuna. I think I could go for some tuna fish right about now. I have my tuna ready to make a silicon mold. Have you figured out why I'm excited that, that I'm going to be casting a tuna yet? I'll wait. Honestly, this one's going to be way more straightforward because uh, there aren't too many areas that are going to hold air. We did it! I have to get that thing out. Figure that out tomorrow. I'm really excited about this one. <laughs> no! Damn it, tuna! Ah, such a big, hefty chunk of silicon. Kill it, man, with that. From memory, his head is down this direction. So now I can cut along the top jaw as well. There we go. Look at that. A clean release of a tuna. Ah, tuna. I'm really happy with this sculpture. I really hope my metal tuna <laughs> turns out like that. Let's do it. I don't think you're ready because what I have made here is one tin of tuna. <laughs> yes! Ah, <gasps> oh, it's amazing! That is very cool. Tintin is a character from a fairly old-fashioned comic book series that was brought to life more recently by Peter Jackson in a 3D animated blockbuster that not a lot of people saw, including me. But I've 3D printed Tintin to make out a tin, but that's not where it ends because I have booleaned out the back so that Tintin fits on a tin so I can make a tin 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 tin. Oh, I might lose some people with that one. <laughs> this next bit is going to be a little bit more experimental, if you couldn't tell. And we've been doing all of these with silicon mold, but when we work with other metals, silicon won't handle the higher temperatures. In our research, we have found that people create tin sculptures and pores with magic sand. Get in there, buddy. I need to pack this in because I want to get the ridges of the texture of the tin, but we need to make sure that the tin tin is also visible. I feel like we're going to lose all the detail. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, ooh. Okay, all right. Very ploopy. Oh. Oh, oh no, my tin. Too much tin. Too much tin. Let's set that aside. I don't know if 
it'll turn out any good. Um, <laughs> it's our least graceful one yet. Let's find out with a little bit of cleanup back in the studio. This was all one big experiment with my first dabble into playing with molten metal. And the plan will be next to move on to aluminium and beyond. Now our earliest dabbles, just with the stuff, the, the molds we had lying around or the, the tin bar cast that it came with, not perfect results, but cool enough to sort of get the ball rolling. Now this was our first custom mold, not of something I made in particular, but of something we wanted to see how detailed and stuff we could get. Also starting to feel really substantial. The actual cast is heavy, like, you know, but what it was cast from is so highly detailed that we lost a lot of that with the tin. But maybe there's a way to keep that detail that you could figure out if you do more research than I did. I have no idea. Then we get custom, our tin man and our tin of tuna, both of which are absolutely my favorites. They turned out so good, like so good. I am so happy with these and it really shows that you can take this whole medium from start to finish in a really custom and epic way that I just love. And last but not least, we have our tin, 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 uh, which I think shows that sometimes you can have too much tin, 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 tin. That last one was stupid. I probably should have stopped at the cool ones, huh? Nah! Subscribe for more! Thanks for watching and until next time. I feel like a tin pun would go really well here, Tom. Tin, 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 and tin, tin till next time. Tin, 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 tin.